Nate Diaz, you know, he's one of the best in the division. You know, nobody can take that away from me. And I'm real excited to actually get in there and fight somebody that's going to fight me back. You know, I don't have to worry about him shooting me all the time, running. We're going to fight and we're going to look to put on a fight of the year. Uh, absolutely, I definitely got something to prove. Not only just with that fight, but in this whole division. You know, I still think that. You know, um, people aren't respecting me as much as they should, and uh, people are overlooking me as quite possibly the best in the division, and I really think I am. So, um, I've always had a chip on my shoulder fighting, and now I have a real big chip on my shoulder. What's the mental process like for you after a loss like that? I mean, how, how much recovery time is there where you're going, and this, this sucks, I guess, hurts. Yeah, uh, there's no recovery time in it. You know, I, I won that fight. You know, the judges just got it wrong so in my mind we did everything right uh, I executed my game plan extremely well and you know they just got it wrong so my mental processes I just went back and started working hard and now I'm getting ready for Nate is there a danger to try to maybe like getting try to get two wins the next time you come out like two wins on one night to just try try to erase that memory for everybody uh, no no not necessarily you know I think if I go in here and I get a, a, a devastating win or a devastating knockout then you know there's no question about how good I am in this division what, what about is there a way to prepare mentally for you know some of the stuff he might do in there against you where you like in, in camp you try to prepare like all right if he does this or if he flips me off how do I, how do I react to that you're to see this you know this big <laughs> smile on my face that I got right now um, you know back at home in my in my home camp you know we we like to mess around with each other and talk a little trash but it's all in good fun so if he does it in the fight you know it's not gonna throw me off my game I'm just looking at him and continuing to do what I do best are you an interested observer in the title fight from Saturday night what do you think about Dos Anos and Stronos? I'm gonna watch you know because I'll be down winning my fight uh, but I think Cowboy's gonna win that but at the same time um, if I were those guys I wouldn't get too comfortable with that title you know um, they're gonna have it for a very short time because after I get this win I'm coming to take the title and they won't be able to enjoy it that much you might have to wait for Conor McGregor if uh, he comes up to 155 what are your thoughts on him joining the division <laughs> fuck that I am not waiting behind a fucking featherweight coming to my division trying to fight for the title you know um, Conor's a great fighter but he's a featherweight right now you know he's not a lightweight he hasn't fought any lightweights in the UFC and it's a different world in there, so. You know, Connor's doing great things at Featherweight. He might want to stay there because um, we're different animals up here in this lightweight division. You what know, makes it different? What was that? What makes it different? He's not fighting undersized guys. Connor's huge for that weight class, you know, and he's fighting guys that are just as big as him, guys with better wrestling, better skill sets, and um, a whole different mentality. You know, I mean, the two guys in the main event are animals. You know, everybody knows that. Me and Nate Diaz are you know, probably the best two strikers in the division. You got Edson Barbosa, who just took a huge loss. Tony Ferguson, I mean, just look at the top 10 in the lightweight and think that can compare to the top 10 in the featherweight? Absolutely not.